hacían más sobre el pie. ¿eh? This is my, my country here, uh, Indonesia. This is the maritime countries. It's over 17,000 islands. Biodiversity richness, so it's obvious, and also biodiversity uniqueness, because each of the island is actually separated for uh, many hundred years. You know, Some of the island is actually separated from other island for one million years. So this actually the Biodiversity is uniqueness is very high, cultural diversity of, of, of uh, also there. And we have also uh, the connection between uh, human being and nature resources, biodiversity, uh, then creating the local knowledge. We have also a thick divide also actually, the understanding of biodiversity in Indonesia. Each individual and each city uh, has a different uh, knowledge on the understanding of biodiversity. So the common knowledge uh, on biodiversity is actually uh, very important for food, health, fibers, and so many other things. At the moment, currently, we are human beings only depend on around 20 or 21 species for food, but there are so many things. So we are just concerning uh, 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 about 21 species, which is actually promoted by FAO. But actually, there are so much more, you know, for food, for health, for fiber, for, for anything, for many other purposes. And also, we learned that there are strong connections between people and the biodiversity, which actually resulting a uh, vast array of traditional knowledge related to the use, to the use of the biological diversity. Here, there is also global divide between countries rich in the biodiversity and uh, developed countries with high science and technology, which I would like to explore uh, later on. The, the actual thing today is, is the science and technology, especially biotechnology, continue, continuously advancing in the acceleration. So, this is actually part of my uh, our experiment in, in my, my laboratory. We actually uh, looking at the trees, which is in the Borneo and also in uh, Sumatra. These trees is put go high up to 40 meters, but the smell is like garlic. So this actually found that inside these trees, inside the fruit especially, we found one of the chemical compounds. We call it sporocarpin B, which is very good for treatment of leukemia, cell leukemia, uh, leukemia uh, cancers, because it's inhibited the uh, cancer leukemia cell growth. Another one, this is my, my areas, my globalities. I work a lot on aphidomyces, and with the new technologies, with the ability for us to read gene, and then we can actually identify up to the species and the genetic level. But when we actually uh, uh, connect the information of species of the genus here with the patent document, for example, there are a lot of values on that one. For example, some could actually uh, producing the enzyme which can actually uh, degrade the plastic, for example, or some is actually anti-cholesterol to low down the cholesterol, anti-fungal, anti vital for chemotherapy, enzyme industry, including actually the novel protein, for example. There are so many uh, important uh, potential value on the plant. When we see the frog, for example, we have 
also a lot of species of, of rope. I think I do believe here also in Bangladesh, you have also uh, many uh, species of rope here. But this, the cell under the skin is producing the mandainin, which is actually small amplified pipe, which could actually uh, be developed for new antibiotic, which is very important to uh, overcome the resistant uh, pathogen. Another issue is here, like this one, this corn snail, venom, which is actually come out from the use from the Santa Cruz biotech, uh, for example. They producing this, the venom is actually containing the ziconotide. Ziconotide is new powerful uh, for uh, relieving the pains. It's actually up to 1,000 times more effective than mor morphine, for example, and have the advantage of not being addictive um, if uh, you are using it. But no, at the moment, it's already a uh, in the market with the value of 6.5 million US dollars per gram of this uh, drug. So with this information, with the ability of human being to accelerate the reading of the genes, so the, I do believe that ex exploitation of biological diversity will be continuous and will be accelerated. So, it is lucky for, for, for us that we have uh, UNCDD, the global, globally accepted legal instrument, and with the three objectives. The first, we have to conserve biological diversity because this could be very useful in the future for humankind. And the second one, we have also to use it, not only, not only to conserve it, but to use it, but in a sustainable way including its components uh, available in the biodiversity. But we have also to use it in fair and equitable setting. So this UNCPD actually followed by Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety and also with Nagoya Protocol on access to genetic resources and fair and equitable sharing of benefit arising from the utilization of the convention. In Indonesia, we actually ratified all of the uh, CBD and uh, Nagoya Protocol and Katagaya Protocol, meaning that we understand the value of the biodiversity. So, in the preamble of the CBD, if we are ratifying the CBD, so the people should actually cons consist you know, on the intrinsic value of biological diversity and the ecological and the function of the biological diversity on ecological and genetic, social, economy, and so many other things. And also we have to consist on the importance of biological diversity for evolution and maintaining the life uh, sustaining system uh, of the biosphere. I think in the bioethics, Human declaration on bioethics. Uh, we learned we learn that uh, the basic principle, one of the basic principles, is we have to have a kind of harmony with the with the nature, which is not being explored so much, you know, in the constellation of the UNESCO. Anyway, when we when we utilize, the utilization of biodiversity is only uh, based only on science and technology capacity, based on the funding available based on the economic interest. This could lead to create greater divide and eventually hurting the achievement of the LCD objective of conservation on the selling identity. I think this could be a lot of uh, issues here. So for the implementation for the implementation of the NCBD, particularly Nagara Protocol, I do believe that high degree of trust including trust between countries having high science, technology, and funding capacity, and the country reaching by the is mandatory. 
Another requirement is actually input digital transparency, recognition uh, on the comprehensive uh, right of biodiversity of these countries, promoting knowledge about the existence of their right and responsibility to and the uh, political strategy to make the right and the responsibility become a uh, reality. The responsibility for maintaining trust and ethical standard. I think cannot depend solely on rule and guide or guidelines. Sometimes the local uh, people also has to be uh, recognized. We have to eliminate prejudice, prejudice and maintain the respect and human dignity. Support for inalienable uh, right of local community support the biological resources, knowledge and technology. Access to biological resources subject to prior informed concern of the local communities, especially fair and equitable sharing of benefit to the effective participation of local communities. Appropriate institutional mechanism for the effective implementation and enforcement of the right and, res and responsibility for our people. Regarding the biodiversity itself, you know, it's very difficult <coughs> because it's uncertain. You know, it's actually the value just come out when the science and technology is coming. You know. So. The ethical will be more challenging in the near future as the science continues advancing. Last time when I was at the undergraduate 40 years ago, we actually talking about alpha, beta, and gamma taxonomy. And then now coming the DNA sequence where we can actually read the gene. But this one is not being catching up you know, with this technology. Another coming is actually not only reading the gene, but now you can write the gene, editing the gene, and then we come out the, with the synthetic biology. So I think it will be more complex in, in the future how to protect and conserve biodiversity for the human being uh, to live longer in this uh, planet of Earth, which is very fragile. And also we can get benefit. So I think uh, cooperation is uh, strongly uh, very important in these issues. So I think this I would like to uh, close. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your time. Uh, thank you, Mr. for the wonderful presentation. Now I would like to request Professor Angela Lu to present her presentation on reflections of the ethics on coexisting with disaster.
the, the, the gender and cultural sensitivity, that's the researchers. We have the three authors, and uh, um, my name is Vincent Che, and my colleague is Dr. Angela Law, and Dr. Shah is there. And, and so, so many people talk about what is the ethic, and uh, so I will skip that. Because uh, our lifetime is one thirty, so I'm hungry, so I want to cut it short. <laughs> so what are the research ethics? I mean, uh, since we are the researchers, we need to follow that. No matter how dilemma you have, you need to insist to follow it. That is very important for us. And what is the importance of the research ethics? And uh, yesterday we talked about the cheating of the <coughs> publication, research data, I think that is the big issue. But I don't want to say too, too much, because yesterday we had the big discussion. And uh, because of the extreme climate, that's the global, global issue. And uh, a couple of days ago, my two colleagues and I went to the Kata University to visit the research center on disaster management. And we have, uh, we have a wonderful communication and uh, we set up a goal for the future collaborative research. And uh, because of that, because of extreme climate and high risk disaster society is come to us. Not to you, not to me, to all of the people in this global society. And um, so because of the impacts of the disasters, we need to uh, integrate all of the resources from a medicine, social worker, nurses, psychology, everybody, all kinds of variety of the variety of the specialty to work on this. And uh, not only the social culture influenced by the disaster, but the issue concerned the following also surface injustice resource. Uh, uh, allocation, legal applicability between the urban and the rural areas. That is very serious problem in Taiwan because we have the variety of the racial groups in uh, NGO and in, in, in NGO partnership. As uh, DJ mentioned about his uh, collaborative uh, study and the project among the Southeast Asian country. He mentioned about trust wars, relationship and partnership is very important, and especially for the disaster uh, project or research. And you can see that the disaster come to so many countries, just like uh, uh, tsunami and earthquake in Indonesia last year. And that's the typhoon in, in the Kansai airport last year. And uh, that's again, uh, that's a volcano disaster. And Taiwan is the same thing. We are located in the monsoon, uh, monsoon belt and earthquake belt. So monsoon and earthquake attack us every year. Not one time, not two times, maybe 10 times. So we need to work on that. And as I say, that's a global issue. The reason I say that, can you see that? Uh, <coughs> we call it is the fire Pacific Rim because most of the earthquake, tsunami is, is happening in the Pacific Rim. Uh, in, in Korea, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Hong Kong, so we need to go get together to solve the problem. So support each other, help each other. Uh, as I say, that is the monster belt. And how are we going to coexist with the disaster? I mean, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. We, the, the knowledge need to base on the research. The knowledge need to be based on the practitioner's knowledge. So, as I say, 
the knowledge is and, and experiences of disaster to face the future challenge of the disaster. Oops. Without PowerPoint, I cannot talk. You know, what's mean of the PowerPoint? We are hungry, I mean, a point with power, power with point. So that is PowerPoint. So without that, I cannot talk. So please, please see. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what we have seen and heard over the disaster, I think uh, colleagues, especially DJ worked with us for many years. And, uh, you know, DJ, if, if, if I finish my presentation, you want to say something, please just stand up, all right? And then, <laughs> wow. The one thing I would like to say that is a lack of the gender and cultural sensitivity. I think it's very important. This morning and yesterday we talked about the gender equity. And, and, and I was the founder of Gender Studies in Taiwan. I'm the feminist. So I'm very concerned about the gender sensitivity. If we get into the, the, the victim area, we work just like a man. It's not good enough because most of the victims are women and children. So we need to have a different way to solve the problem. So lack of the gender and cultural sensitivity because most of the disaster come to us not in the metropolitan area, but in the rural rural area. So we need to have the cultural sensitivity because we. Uh, the gender is different. Is uh, the social status is differences. Resources are quite different. According to UNESCO, 75 percent of the victims are women and children. That's why I'm saying we need to have the sensitivity to work with the different people, no matter who he or she is, and. Uh, I think in the pictures, uh, Angela worked with the local organization composed to indigenous women who show their self identity and reconstruction power. And the power comes from the fulfillment and empowerment. And uh, globalization and drastic change of the Social great impact women who has been proposing that social resources, gender equality, gender inequality is the main cause of the women uh, in the hard time in the disaster. So I skip a little bit. And uh, UNISDR emphasize if the risk and the need assessment is conducted from the single angle. It will neglect the variety of the hidden and potential factors. Therefore, it should be conducted under multicultural scope and gender sensitivity consideration. Okay. Generally, generally, women are usually at the disadvantage situation and environment in disaster. One of the factors is that in equality and lack of the information. Therefore, in the information provision and the management, gender sensitivity should be involved to understand the situation of the women in social isolation, using the multiple ways to provide information to ensure women to obtain and utilize the information. <laughs> Alright, two minutes. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, not only the the resource provider, but also the policy making. That is very important. That's why I say, uh, Doctor uh, Suzuki's pro. Uh, I, 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 I'm 
presentation is the implementation of Nagoya protocol. That is very important. We can uh, talk about it that later. And uh, apartment project, we cannot uh, just uh, depend on the government, uh, you know, support. I mean, the uh, community basis of the empowerment project is very important. Okay. Action plan and cultural sensitivities, the same thing, because in Taiwan is a multicultural society. Just like last night, we have the multicultural performance, different countries song, dancing, dress, is different. They have your characteristics. That's the same thing. I mean, the different people in Taiwan, we have the different culture. So we need to respect that, no matter who she is. So, <clears throat> I'm go faster. And, you see, when we have, as a researchers or practitioner, when you get into the disaster area, we have the resources. We have the connections. And if we lack of the sympathy, you know, that is another disaster. See, when the victims come from the disaster area, they maybe come out with nothing. So the temptation of the money and, and materials, they then got no choices. So we need to have the embassy. And uh, that is very important, you know. So we need to, researchers and a practitioner need to reflect <coughs> ourselves, to ask ourselves, is our service is capable, is good to the victims. The right to free choice. Conduct the research who is not relevant to the disaster because disaster come and government provide a big grant for research. And some of the researchers get into the victim areas, but not for relevant research. I, I think that is not ethic. And uh, when we get in there, we need to notice if we get involved with them, with no sensitivity and empathy, that is the second physical and emotional harm to the victims. Responsibility and commitment. Uh, I think it's one month ago, one of the professor from uh, Melbourne University, Australia, he worked in, in the Yachi uh, tsunami in Indonesia. He showed me a picture. That a picture has a banner. Don't just look, promise and live which means you need to stay with them, work with them as a team. Not just bring the money, bring the resource, and say bye-bye. And took some picture and, and, and put on your you know, journal or anything, and show I'm a good man. I'm going to, I went there and helped the people. That's not. And integrate, integrate the related researchers because you and you and you, so many researchers get into there and request the victim to fill up 10 questionnaires. Do you know that is the atosion? We don't want to abuse them. So as we try to get integrate all of the research project into one project, and and researchers can share all of the data. And hidden potential profile research might bring in the future. Uh, of course, that is uh, very important for 
as I say, the researcher and the practitioner, we really need to reflect ourselves and find the best way to walk on, to walk with the victims. And uh, personal information management and the principle of confi confidentiality. And we talked about that, you know, from yesterday to, to today. In disaster, it's the same thing. We need to have the confidentiality. And the uh, principle of, you know, uh, as I say, the, the equality of the power relationship between the research uh, produce, uh, protecting the rights of the research participant, strength, perspective, empowerment, as I say, empowerment is very important. And uh, we use the sculpture creation courses based on the self-identity. I try my best. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> and so uh, people ask me why you use the arts creation program to the victims because the social resources. Angela's uh, her second uh, specialty is painting. My second uh, specialty is sculpture. So we have the team. People ask me why don't you use the musical therapy or audio therapy. I say because of the social uh, and the social resources. And uh, I just let you know that's a group painting and uh, that's a group painting at the Kaohsiung Guest Trojan uh, Community. And uh, that's from uh, Aboriginal Society. The painting, sculpture, and conclusion is Taiwan is uh, Maritime country with the frequent natural disaster, that is the urgent need for establishing uh, the fundament of the disaster tautology through acclimating. Oh, gee, I have the time pressure, so you know. Okay. That's, that's my favorite one. First, provide enough to satisfy every man's needs, not men, for people's needs, but not every people's greed by Gandhi. That's quite a typhoon, a major cause of the natural disaster in Taiwan, following issue are rapidly testing our intelligence, how to coexist with the natural disaster, how to integrate the culture and gender sensitivity in the world in respect, disaster, recursion, disaster belief and reconstruction, how to accumulate knowledge and experiences from disaster. Okay. Uh, if you if you forget my last name, think about that. My last name is She. In Mandarin, it means thank you. She, She, it means thank you. So you, you can call me Dr. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Thank you. She, She. Thank you. You are listening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. This has been such a wonderful presentation. Now I would like to request more applause for that. You know, I am in working on Rashadi and associate professor of uh, social work with the Rasta Government College and Parallel for the presentation on influence of adherence on dropout among secondary school children and psychology. This is very interesting in the Indonesian context. I have found that two uh, principal things that could mean that is, I mean, the anti cancer. Uh, uh, I mean, phenomenon, so we can go for further research, even we can go for some sort of clinical research and RCT based on that. And also, Jikonotai uh, as the replacement of morphine, we can, we can bring some good ideas, and I am proton sequencing also in suggested. So, 
he focused on uh, those issues and you know the Nagwa protocol was followed by 1992 initiative of the Convention on Biodiversity and it was approved in 2010 and 2014, uh, 105 countries signed that Nagwa protocol but we, we didn't go through that. So still, you know, uh, in, in the next week, from 2 to 13, there will be COP25 for UNFCC in Spain. It was supposed to held in Chile, Santiago, but uh, for the political turmoil. So uh, 25 climate change conference has been so far there globally with the participants from uh, I mean, uh, all states throughout the globe. But still, we cannot I mean, focus on the biodiversity issue, the climate factors, and as he mentioned, global divide on these issues is very strong. So Taiwan has very, I mean, uh, reasonable perspective politically also. Uh, I mean, to come forward with these issues. For the second presentations, uh, extreme weather event. I, I work with climate change issues and other things. Uh, rightly mentioned regarding the psychosocial stress and which also connected the third presentation also. So uh, I think that gender sensitiveness doesn't always mean it will be women sensitive. It is also, I mean, men sensitive also in some perspectives. So gender, gender sensitiveness is okay. And you focused on sympathy, I think, for psychosocial stress uh, following like something, the typhoon, uh, Morocco, or I have had experience in working in uh, 2007 while I was working with WHO in post cedar psychosocial <coughs> stress condition in our uh, part of the, the world, in the southern part of the <coughs> So people were so overwhelmingly stressed that sympathy was not enough. We need empathy. So empathetic consideration for this emotional no harm. This is important in uh, perspective of our ethics. And you rightly mentioned that justice is important. And environmental justice is always ecocentric. And that's why for the first feeling I thank him, uh, he brought out the new species of frogs. So that is interesting also. So for self-identity, I liked for the second presenter, the sculpture, the painting, which denotes the autonomy. We call always autonomy, justice, maleficence, beneficence, but we don't explain, translate it into action. So this is a very good example of uh, I mean, involving children with painting and sculpturing to denote their self-identity uh, and exploring. Uh, we segregate them as Aboriginal people, but they have their own identity. That is, that is the autonomy. So these are the interesting things for the third one. Uh, well, as a medical graduate, I used to uh, know the ataxia things, which, which controls the cerebellar function. But now, ataraxia is uh, coming up, and you know, culturally, we have in uh, in our ancient time, not that much ancient, like 50 years ago. Also, we have had a system of home teacher, what we mentioned as home coordinator. Guest teachers, they used to take care of these drop out children. We need to, uh, I mean, address those things also. So I would like to thank all, and I will not uh, stand and uh, stand between the lunch and the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>